Canadians pride themselves on having a responsible and accountable government and on a parliamentary system that embraces these ideals. Now, one of our primary vehicles for holding governments accountable is through confidence votes. A government must have the confidence of the members of the House of Commons in order to continue governing. Only five prime ministers in Canadian history lost control when they lost these votes, forcing an election. But Stephen Harper escaped this fate in late 2008 by asking for a recess or a prorogation and setting off with summer dubbing a crisis in responsible government. The Harper government introduced a number of economic measures, one of which was to remove the public funding for the political parties. And so the prime minister in a minority house had done this incredibly uh, artful thing of organizing all of the opposition uh, aggressively uh, against him, which was going to, which foreshadowed his defeat. The Liberal Party, uh, the New Democratic Party, and the Bloc Québécois all signed a coalition agreement to form a new government. So this is what uh, was triggered. Uh, and then, uh, having created that situation, Prime Minister Harper uh, refused to meet Parliament. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if we're using the schoolyard metaphor, this would be the bully who finally, when the three little weaker ones sort of ganged up on him, you know, he took the shortcut around the back of the school to go home. He didn't want to face them. And his shortcut around the back of the school going home was to Rideau Hall asking the Governor General to grant prorogation. On the one hand, you could say that it's a very innovative tactic by Stephen Harper. Uh, the Prime Minister felt that what, what, if I need to save this government, the only way I'm going to be able to do it is to, as you say, give it a time out, give us an opportunity to regroup to recalibrate and perhaps acquire new support from the opposition or elements of the opposition, at least in such a way that we can proceed with governing with the support of a majority of the House. Well, he was, success he was able to do that successfully and in that respect I think it was a very, a very interesting tactic and, and a very compelling tactic at that. Uh, whether or not he should be able to do it I think is a difficult question. I, I, I think you'll find that constitutional scholars are, are I wouldn't say in complete disagreement. I, I would say that it seems that most felt that this was an inappropriate maneuver. Uh, but you will find some that would make a case that he, there, there is room within, within our system for him to do that. And there is room within our system for our prime ministers to ask for parliament to be prorogued. In fact, it's a routine practice. A prorogation ends the parliamentary session, and all bills not passed into law die on the floor. The controversial issues here were not only that Harper's government was merely six weeks old, but that he used this maneuver to prevent his government from losing a vote of confidence and the right to govern to a rare opposition coalition. I say shame on everyone involved in that. The government, uh, the parties that wanted to form a coalition and thwart the will of the electorate. Um, I think if everyone had to do it over again, uh, they wouldn't do what they did because everyone lost credibility and uh, democracy took a big hit in that one. I, I believe that the constitutional crisis in Canada in December of 2008 certainly had a, a major impact on the way that Canadians perceive public affairs and national politics. It sorts out in sort of some different, it, it's not all a uniform view, however, that, that people took. Uh, a lot of uh, Canadians who had voted Conservative all of a sudden uh, were appalled to think that there would be, you know, a coalition government with Stéphane Dion as Prime Minister and the New Democrats and the Separatists in, in power. And uh, yet at the same time, uh, many other Canadians pointed out there's nothing uh, inimical about having coalition governments in a parliamentary system. Coalition governments have in fact played an important, if not all that familiar, role in Canadian politics. In 1867, Canada's year of federation, Canada was led by Sir John A. Macdonald and a coalition government. Canada was, essentially, born of coalitions. In a minority government situation, they have to rely on the support of other parties in the House. 
And that was, I think that was lost in a lot of the debate here, that the Conservatives could no longer govern with the support of the majority of the House. And as a result, they did not have a mandate under the terms of our system to govern. Under the terms of responsible parliamentary government, they could not continue to govern. One of the things that I found most disconcerting about that whole affair was the misconceptions about parliamentary democracy that were propagated not just by the media but by politicians themselves. I think there was a lot of uproar because there was a lot of misinformation coming from uh, the government. Uh, I mean I think the government and senior government ministers were saying things which were categorically false. Um, the, uh, and I think that misinformation spread uh, and made people apprehensive. But in fact, coalition governments are the norm in many countries around the world, in many democratic, advanced democratic nations, uh, and they do just fine. The uh, present conservative minority government requires the support of another party to pass any legislation. It's just a fact. Well, a coalition actually is arguably more stable because it institutionalized that agreement. It says, you know, us two, part two, uh, two parties will work together to uh, have an agreement on a certain legislative agenda, and we'll stay together for the term, uh, for a three-year term. So another way to think of a coalition government is it's a more stable response to our current situation. We as citizens did not engage in a meaningful debate about what our system could allow and not allow and how it's supposed to work. And I think that that, 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 that has very serious and I think somewhat grave implications for the health of our democratic system. But was this Bloc Québécois NDP Liberal coalition about governmental stability and responsible government, or were other factors at play? It was all about political power and you know as much as I'd like to think that there's integrity to you know these efforts to bring down the government, uh, you know, I know that you know from my experience uh, political parties uh, will react to opportunities to take over power. But you have the absurd situation where you have political parties saying they're going to, in the NDP's case, where they'd vote against a budget even before reading it. I think everybody uh, had, had smudges on their face mm -hmm. uh, coming out of this. All the parties did because uh, the Liberals and the New Democrats had both pledged uh, just weeks before in the October uh, general election that they would not be part of a coalition. And you get votes from citizens in an election based on what you've said. That is the mandate. That's the bargain, the pact that you have. And when you break the pact, you, you are uh, d breaking the, the bond of trust and, uh, and credibility, in fact, and legitimacy.